this everything? Tropical cyclones are one of Mother Nature's most devastating phenomenons. They're divided into three major classes based on wind speed. Tropical depressions, tropical storms, and the most powerful, hurricanes. Forget about summer and fall in Miami. Here, it's hurricane season. As the most powerful type of tropical cyclone, hurricanes are separated into five numbered categories. The higher the number, the more powerful the storm. But that doesn't mean category one hurricanes or even tropical storms should be taken lightly. Hurricanes have had an enormous impact on South Florida and the University of Miami in particular. Beginning with the Great Miami Hurricane of 1926, a category four hurricane that devastated the U just a year after being chartered. Years later, Hurricane Andrews swept through South Florida, leaving absolute destruction in its path. These two hurricanes and many others have shaped building codes emergency management, and life as we know it in Miami. The actions we take before, during, and after hurricanes can mean the difference between life and death. Your mission is to assemble a team of experts in the fields of preparedness, safety, and vigilance. You must use their knowledge to create a video outlining the points contained in this document. Katrina Mortensen, a 24-year-old risk management analyst, an expert at calculating risk and preparing for the worst. Charlie West, a 26-year-old safety inspector. Millions of people depend on him each and every day without even knowing it. Ivan Moran, a 24-year-old combat veteran. Together with his dog Wilma, no one is better at sniffing out danger The key to surviving any major storm is being prepared for it. Believe me, stock up on non-perishable food, water, and supplies for at least three days. The earlier you get stocked up, the better. You don't wanna be stuck waiting in line at the grocery store because you waited until the last minute. If you have to be stuck inside without power, at least you won't have to do it hungry. If you have a car, fill up the tank with gasoline well before the storm and park it in a parking garage above ground level if possible. If you have any prescription medications, get them refilled. And get some cash from an ATM. A lot of businesses remain closed after a devastating hurricane, especially if there's no power in the area. Charge all of your electronic devices like your phone, your tablet, or your laptop, and keep a car charger handy. Also, get batteries for flashlights and radios. When the power goes out, you may have to rely on these battery-powered devices. Update all of your emergency contact information on the University of Miami website. Contact your family to inform them of your plan and also become familiar with evacuation information. If you live off campus, know whether or not you live in an evacuation zone and plan accordingly. If campus is ordered to evacuate, residential students will be required to go and stay with their friends and family. For students who cannot evacuate on their own, you'll be asked to self-identify to university officials, and you'll be transported to a shelter thereafter. Finally, monitor the situation closely. Keep an eye out for storm alert emails from the university. Visit www.miami.edu slash prepare or call 1-800-227-0354 for all of your emergency information updates. Staying safe during a hurricane is simple, but extremely important. Take it from a guy who installs child locks in his kitchen and doesn't even own a child. The number one rule for staying safe during a hurricane is to shelter indoors as far from windows as possible at all times. Don't be a citizen meteorologist. If you have shutters, this is the time to use them. Imagine a two by four flying through your living room at 100 miles per hour. I'm not joking, stay away from the windows. 
Last but not least, monitor the storm as closely as possible. If you have power, keep up to date with the storm via television, radio, and internet. If not, this is where battery-operated radios really come in handy. Follow these easy steps, and anyone can survive a hurricane. Knowing what you should and should not do after a hurricane is just as important as knowing what you should do before and during one. Before venturing outside, wait for the all clear. Most injuries actually occur after the storm has passed because people no longer see it as a dangerous situation. If you're not with your family, get in touch with them to let them know you're all right. Then visit recover.miami.edu to update the university on your status. Immediately report all accidents, injuries, and hazardous damage to the proper authorities. Be on the lookout for debris left behind and especially loose palm fronds. But honestly, if you really want to stay safe after a hurricane, stay inside. Don't go out unless you absolutely must. Mission accomplished. Well done. Andrew, 